Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This is quite a, a very um, controversial subject, but um, I'm sure to make for an interesting conversation. Well, Paris Saint-Germain and uh, Morocco defender Ashraf Hakimi uh, left his wife, Hiba Abouk, shocked uh, following a divorce application she filed over allegations of infidelity about Abouk, who is 36, approached the court to seek the dissolution of their marriage and demanded half of Hakimi's property, uh, half of his wealth in a divorce settlement. However, it was discovered um, that he had no assets, no single asset. Now, the 24-year-old Moroccan international had registered all his property and assets under his mother, Sadia Mout's name, in her name. Ashraf Hakimi's wife had taken the court for a divorce case and wanted them to separate the assets and divide them in court. When the divorce took place and they agreed to share the assets, they realized that Ashraf Hakimi had no assets and neither did the bank um, have anything in his name. Ashraf Hakimi had put all his fortune in his mother's name a long time ago. These are the words of Stud Football Club. Uh, it's an, a publication right there in, in Europe. Now, um, reactions, however, from a wide-ranging section of the public in Nigeria and around the world have varied, with some questioning the action of the footballer. A famous Nigerian Catholic priest, Reverend Father Chinenye Oluoma, uh, said that one's mother, sister, or any other person is secondary to his wife. Now, the pair um, started courting in 2018, got married in 2020, and have two sons. She filed for divorce in March 2023, and of course, this, uh, like you say, the rest is history. Now, is this approach, or is this approach rather, by Hakimi, one that husbands should adopt in this increased, or uh, this age of increased divorce, especially in sub Saharan Africa and in Nigeria uh, in particular? Joining us to do justice to this and other questions is Julie Mogo, who is the family bond nurse, Joseph Vazum from Abuja. Julie, nice to have you. Uh, Kofi, Kofi is the name. Yes. Kofi, yes. It's all right, it's all right. Um, but Julie, interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, I would like us to listen to uh, a, a pastor. And this is Pastor Lanry of House on the Rock, Port Hackett. Um, we all love Pastor Lanry. I know him personally. And he, he shared uh, some thoughts in his sermon in church recently, which has um, gained some attention on social media. Uh, we'll use that as the basis for our conversation as well as so some fuel for what we want to talk about. So we'll roll the tape and when we come back, uh, Julie, we continue with you. All of you! <laughs> want to buy assets in your mother's name? <laughs> that is not the biblical standard. Someone needs to speak up and call the end. For this reason, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave to his wife, and the two of them shall become one. Someone is asking me in a control room, Hakim is Muslim, why are we bringing it here? Because every other person, including those who are Christians, uh, and those who are non-Muslims are also saying, ah, this is something I can do. So, uh, 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 Julie, um, yeah. should, should Nigerian husbands, um, and generally husbands in general, to this uh, use the Hakimi option, let's call it that. I, I think, thank you very much for bringing this topic up. I think it's something that needs to be addressed since the news broke out with the, uh, with the divorce issue of Hakimi and his wife, there's been a lot of reactions on social media, across social media platforms. I think that the first thing that Nigerian husbands should do, and even before they, begin, uh, they become husbands, what they should do is to have an understanding, be sure that they know very well what it means to be married. Because that is where we have a fundamental issue. If you do not understand what marriage is, it's definitely going to bring a problem. So if I were to answer that question directly, I, I, I would say that 
Nigerian husbands, go take another look. Why would you want to tell the Hakimi's pathway? What kind of wife are you married to? What kind of family do you want to raise? What is your vision of your family? What were your thoughts when you got married in the first place? Why did you get married in the first instance? So if they're able to answer these questions, I'm sure they will find an answer to themselves if this is actually the path to, to, to go. And I'm sure that the response also, or the reactions will be different from husbands whose wives are already comfortable. So why would you want to tow that path if you know that you're married? It's not like, it's not like it was in the, in the past. It, the, things, it, the situation is different now. So it's different from how it was when we had our moms and our grandmoms. So it's not a question of whether to tow their path. But look at your peculiar situation. And then you decide for yourself if that's the path to take, especially when children are involved. Okay, so this is a straight no from you. This is not a path to tow. Is that what you're saying? It's not a path. It's not a path to tow. It's not a path. It's not advisable. All right. Um, um, we're looking at the Nigerian context uh, also looking at the um, uh, you know uh, global context, um, divorce is really on the increase in this part of the world in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa. Would you agree with that as a family bond nurse? Yes, it's it's been on the increase. We actually had a discussion. I had to raise it on a Christian platform. Somehow these discussions are not fully delved into. They are not dissected on some Christian platforms. It's been a topic of discussion in, in some churches, in some groups. But I had to raise it on this platform. And I, some reactions there were like, okay, divorce is not an option for certain religious people in this context are saying for Christians, divorce is not an option. And I told them, I said, hey, let's face it. It may not be the standard that we are taught by or that we are, we are asked to live by, but it is happening. There's been an increase. I think in Lagos State alone, especially during the lockdown, there was a massive, a massive increase in domestic violence. And then there was a record of the number of divorces that was that was recorded in Ikeja alone. I think they had about 90,000, 90,000 divorces. So there's been uh, a, an increase in divorces in Sub-Saharan Africa, in, in Nigeria, in different parts across religion. There has been, whether they are separated, but even going outrightly to divorce completely, it's been on the increase. Thank you very much. Um, um, so you're saying basically that, um, I hope I got you right, uh, the divorce is on the increase in this part of, uh, of the world. Um, what, what accounts for this, 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 this you know, tilt towards divorce in Nigeria um, if it's such a high, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, the high rate is increasing? You're a family born nurse, so I'm guessing that you, you give some therapy you know, to families and all that. Um, if you've dealt with families, marriages, or couples going through a difficult time, what are the major issues driving the increasing rate of divorce in Nigeria today? So uh, it, with the experiences that I have had as a nurse, I decided to work with families to nurse relationships in order to improve health outcomes. So whether it's relationship within family members or within the nurses, the doctors and their patients on the ward, everyone has some form of connection. So if we have healthier relationships, we are better positioned to have a more positive experience as we live daily. So what would I say is the cause? In the, in the cause of my work with families, with individuals and other practitioners, we have discovered that there's something fundamentally wrong with how we were brought up. Now, let me explain. So you see that there's a young boy and a young girl in a family. It's okay for the boy to hang out with the boys, to stay out late at night and come home whenever he likes in some homes. The boy is the first to kind of get a car and maybe to get a job while the woman, the girl is being groomed to be a wife. When she coughs, it says, that how you're going to cough in your husband's house? When she dresses, when she walks, is that how you're going to get married? You want to go get a job. You want to buy a car. You want to do this. You want, you want to travel. You want to live by yourself. So constantly the girl is made to, she's groomed, she's conditioned to be a home person. She's conditioned to be a wife, to be a mother. She's trained that way. That was how many of our mothers and some of us were trained. 
So the, 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 the guys were left on their own. Many of them were left on their own. If a man is family friendly, if a man is an involving father, he probably was taught well or he took a res personal responsibility to be a better father than his own father if you check very well. So we need to check again how our children are being brought up. So the guys are left on their own, the girls are made to be homemakers and we grow up that way. Then let's go into relationships or uh, uh, some form of uh, sexual dispositions. So it's kind of okay for the man to have a fling, to flirt around. It's okay for the husband to, like many would call it, play away match. So you're having mistresses, you're having concubines and all that. It's okay. But when you come to the woman, she's castigated. Just check the case that we are looking at. Many are, are, are fast and quick to cast the blame on his wife. They are quick to say that Heba is at fault. Heba is a gold digger. They didn't go to check what her own net worth is. Who was she before she got married to this guy? She had a life of her own. So generally, the mentality is kind of skewed. It's something that needs to be checked. How are we brought up? That's one. Then secondly, we, we do not understand that it is not people that get married. Values get married. It's not enough to get moved by your emotions or the hormones flying wild within your system. You need to check. You need to find out. Do our values align? What does it believe? What's his thought? What's his thought about working? What's his thought about children? Many do not discuss these things. Way before I got married, I, I went into conversations with people that were married. And you find out that two months into marriage, three months, six months into marriage, and they're saying that they want out. They're saying, I don't even understand this person I'm married to. Then I asked the question, what were you guys discussing while you were courting, while you were dating? So the, the usual practice is jump from one eatery to another, go streaming, go watch a movie and all that. But the very critical things that will that would prove, uh, keep your marriage and prevent it from breaking, many dating couples or dating partners don't sit, up, don't sit down to discuss these things. So one, fundamentally, is our upbringing. The boys are brought up differently than the girls are. Two, not understanding the purpose of marriage. Three, the belief systems and their values about certain things that has to do with the other, other individual. There's, these are three things. There are a lot more, but let me, let me pause here. Oh. All right. Um, you, you've had a lot of stick for the husbands in, you know, the reasons why uh, the divorce rate is on the increase. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure if you had more time, if you had, yeah, I'm sure if you had more time, you would also say some things for... Uh, 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 females as well in the you know mm. it's balanced. but let's look at the the, the issues at stake now um, we have uh, a difference in culture as to what happens when a divorce happens in the uh, West like we call it Europe America and so on, North America and so on and what happens to a divorced couple in Africa you can see she's 36 year old years old so obviously older than Hakimi um, over here, when a divorce is carried out, you know, uh, is affected in a marriage, um, what does the wife and the husband, what do they go away with? Because I've seen abroad that if the husband doesn't have much in his account, he can, if he's filing for divorce, I've seen a case where the husband is giving, you know, some part of the wife's wealth. I've seen a case like that. But more often than not, it's the man who bears the, the brunt. You know, he has to share his wealth in, in, in two. We know what happened to Tiger Woods and uh, Heidi Klum. Um, there's a recent, uh, recently a celebrity, I can't remember the name readily now, said that he was paying child support and the amount of child support he was paying every, every uh, month was, he said it was too high. You know, if you want to look at all the things that he was, had to cater for his kids, even when he was their father, that the money was not going to the kids, that the mother was the one spending it with her boyfriends. Um, so what are your thoughts on this practice of, of splitting the man's wealth that he's garnered over the years um, for, for his wife when the divorce takes place, whether she has a child or she doesn't have a child. Apart from that wealth being split, he also has to pay child support. And this may be a reason why some of these uh, things, like what Hakimi has done now, will be done. 
Okay, so uh, th uh, thank you, Kofi. So before now, what has been the practice is that once there's a divorce, the woman is completely, or if not totally, completely stripped of everything that she has. Even the one that she bought with her own money, it is perceived that she acquired that through her husband or it's by her husband or it's her husband that acquired those things for, for her without people going to discover, to know, to find out, to be sure of what the woman had. That has been the practice. And being in a country where before, before you get the law to speak for you it takes time and some people wouldn't want to even go through it i if i'm not mistaken when there is a divorce with a married couple that whatever properties that is acquired within that marriage is actually for both couples if you acquire that property within marriages for both couples but then when you have a, a you have a thought the reason why you got married in the first instance you can actually chart your own course as a couple you are a father, your, your children are going to be taken care of. If you happen to have a divorce, do what is best, what, what is in the best interest of your children, of your child. You have to do that so that their well-being, they are as less affected as possible by the divorce. So I think or I believe that it is important for properties to be shared, for this, especially where children are involved yeah, but no, no. in in, in our julie context, sorry, sorry to interrupt you julie yeah I, I i would just want to add that like i said earlier um, the practice more often than not in the west is that after they split the property 50 50 uh, or yes. however however the court sees it you still will pay child support every month yes in thousands of dollars even hundreds of thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars yes because it's not, it's not a one-off. You have to be constantly involved in the growth of your children, their development. So you have to. So for 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 the for the child, you it's just like paying fees. When you think you pay, you're not done. Fees is not just what the child needs. There are so many other things that require funding as the child goes on a daily basis. So it's still part of your responsibility that your divorce doesn't mean you're not you're not the, you cease to be the father anymore. That like you give a loan son doesn't mean you're going to hands off completely. I, but what I do not support is where the man is made to pay an extremely high amount. The woman has a responsibility to play as well. She is a partner in this game. She has to earn her own income as well. The problem is just that because of the way we had our parents' marriages, women have not taken it overboard. So they say they want to make their own money. No man is going to come mess them up. Yes, it might be a good thing, but do it from a positive side. Do not do it from a, from a bitter standpoint. These married couples, or if you're divorcing, you are partners already. So whatever it is you're doing should not be to hamper the growth or the well-being of your partner. Of what game would it be? If this, you, you decided to come together, you're deciding to go apart. Let them just go freely. If you have to share your property, do it. If you want to take care of your children, what are you contributing? There's emotional contribution, there's a financial, there are other, there's a social. So you share what your responsibilities are. Allow them access to children, except where one partner is seen to be uh, is seen to be a danger to the children. If the person is not mentally fit to take care of the children, then other means will be sought just to ensure that the children are okay. I do not support and making the man alone pay for child support or making him pay extremely high amount for support and the woman crossing her legs. No, the woman is equally a partner in this game. She has to bring something to the financial table and also be responsible in other areas. All right, so we're looking at this, this Hakimi option, like I said. Um, let's picture the, uh, paint a picture of the scenario. Hakimi yes. is, is a Moroccan, uh, uh, you know, uh, a football of Moroccan origin, born in the Netherlands, grew up in the Netherlands, so European in outlook. Starts football from an early age, of course. We know he used to play for Ajax, FC, and stuff like that. And you know, these footballers, they start very early. They sign contracts from the age of 18 and all that. You know, so builds his wealth. Um, he goes to big clubs like uh, Dortmund, um, you know, you have um, uh, Inter Milan, you know, PSG. These are big clubs in Europe, and he earns his money over the years. Now, this marriage was, you know, was solemnized, I think, in 2020, like we said earlier. So it's about three years old, all right, in the last three years. Um, how are athletes, celebrities like Tiger Woods, like Ashraf Hakim, Who've spent their years sweating it out, okay, um, trying to make a living, putting their life on on the line. How are they supposed to react or feel when they someone comes along and marries them? Sometimes 
It's just for the money. Sometimes it's just a plan. Not all the time, but we know some of the popular stories, you know. And then within a year or two, they say they want to divorce and they want 50% of the of, of pay. Um, how, do, how do they protect themselves against losing everything? We've seen what happened to Tiger Woods. He has never really truly recovered from that episode. I'm not saying he was innocent, you know, but I'm sure Heidi has her own issues as well. Um, so I won't take sides here. But both men and women, celebrities, how do they protect themselves from, from um, uh, gold diggers? I'm not saying she's a gold digger in this Hakimi's case, but from a situation where, you know, you're married for one year, for two years, and then you have to part with half of what you've worked for over the long span of your career because of that marriage for one or two years. How do you protect yourself against losing everything? Well, I, I would say that one may not be able to 100% protect themselves from incidences like these. Why? Because the intent and the state of man's heart, one cannot know the extent to which man would go to get their own selfish desires uh, met or granted. We never can tell. So we can't give 100% assurance on this particular thing. However, I would want to say that it's important. Look at the celebrities. You are a celebrity. You want to go get married to a flashy model or one lady who is seen as a queen and all of that. But you take time to study, to know the person you're about to marry. Because they want to marry someone like them. So they can flaunt their wives when they go out to events and all of that. Need to do your due diligence before. This is for those that are yet to get married. Do your homework. Know your partner. Then when you come together, before you even get married, what is your vision? What, what do you want to build? What kind of family do you want to build? You want your life out there in the public. There are some celebrities that you don't even get to know about their personal lives. So what kind of family do you want to build? Do you want, do you want to be... In the media, they want to be in the news every now and then. There's, there's no, there's no, nothing we do on the surface of this earth that doesn't come with a price. So if you get married and a divorce happens, there will be a price. And mind you, like you said, it's not that these things just happen. There's a cause for it. Now, if a woman should come out and say, oh, I am not doing this again, maybe that's just one out of many. Perhaps she's gotten to her field and she cannot, to her limit, and she cannot handle it anymore. That could be the cases of some of those women. And there are those that just come, yes, the one who dig. So what should celebrities do? That's a tough one. I will not advise that you put all of your money with your mom. No. So why not as you start off? Let her, if she's not the one that wants to be empowered, discuss, hey, babes, I need you to generate your own income. I need you to be as financially uh, financially empowered and free as possible. I do not think, except the woman it has, has issues, I do not think that if a wife sees that her husband does everything, genuinely is interested in her growth, in her financial freedom, will turn around to want to stab him. What's her vision? What's her desire? What does she want to achieve? You'll be, you'll be, you'll what's you'll her be, surpri you'll be surprised. Don't <laughs> you, you'll be, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be yeah. surprised. I'm sure we've seen some of the things that have happened. I mean, the recent court case that played out involving uh, Johnny Depp, we've seen a lot of things. Oh, the, the allegations of rape against uh, Neymar, Hakimi's teammate. He was only yeah. saved. He was only saved by CCTV. Otherwise, he'd have been behind bars by now. You know, you'll be surprised. But um, um, <laughs> let's bring it back home, um, Julie. Um, we have, like I said earlier, and I think you've, you've um, given your thoughts on that, a different setup in Nigeria. Um, the Nigerian woman is a Nigerian wife. is already grappling with trying to make her family understand that she has a right to inherit her father's property as mm -hmm. well as the male children. That's a battle. And we will give uh, props and uh, kudos to state governments like River State Government under Yes Omike, who um, enacted a law, signed into law, uh, that women can inherit their family property in River State. So uh, in a lot of other states in the country, it is uh, it's a battle. Um, what can we do to ensure, and we all know, you know, from the Nollywood movies and all that, that portray Nigerian society, how, you know, widows are kicked out of the family property. They... The, the man's family will come in some instances and say, well, our, house, our brother is dead. Give him our property. They're waiting by the side. Some will say that they're going to marry the wife of, of, of their brother. A lot of things that women go through. You can even expand straight on that if you want to. But how can we protect 
the Nigerian widow? Okay, so for our, for our mothers who are widows and who were widows before maybe they, they, they passed on and who are, who are currently experiencing this, it's, it's going to be a struggle. They are left to be supported by their children. My mom, my mom is a widow. We faced the same thing, interestingly. So they're left to, to struggle by themselves. No one's speaking for them. And then the children grow up, start earning a living, and then they take care of their mom. So the, what, what is going on now, if you observe, uh, Kofi, you would see that all over social media, girls are not smiling anymore. They've seen their mothers, their elder sisters, their aunties suffer. They've seen their landladies suffer. And they tell themselves, no, I am not going to experience it. Now, check the Nigerian law, except for River State now. And I don't know of any other state that has, that has joined River State. Imagine this being in existence. Imagine us seeing our mothers suffer. What do you think would be our decision? We would want to study. We want to go to work. We want to climb to the peak of our career before one man comes in because we never can tell. We've seen it play out over and over again in the lives of our mothers, our aunties, our elder ones. And we don't want the same thing anymore. So the ladies are not waiting. They are going on to make a living and to build wealth for themselves so that if any man comes and anything happens, they have something to their own name and they can take care of themselves. So while we call on the government to do all that they can because girls are not lesser of children than the boys. They are equal. They are children of that home. The man took care of them. He, he built his wealth for them. And they, the men themselves need to understand that your female children are equally your children. They are still human beings as well. So for the widows to be protected, for women to be protected, there has to be a law to it. One, there has to be an orientation on both parties because when men die, not only the, 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 the living men go after the widows, women in the family as well will go leave my brother's house. They will strip his, his wife of everything that she has. So there has to be some kind of family education, family life education for as many people as possible. There has to be laws that will protect the women. There has to be programs that would encourage the girls to go in to, to acquire skills that will enable them to earn a living for themselves. There has to be also orientation for the boys. The boys should not be left out. Yes, I see a lot of women empowerment program and all of that. Our men also need to be empowered. Let them understand that when you see a woman, see you could see See her as a business partner. All right. See her as a financial, as an investor. Do not look down on her because she has wealth. Some of our ladies are suffering now because they have their cars, they have their houses and all of that. And no man will want to marry them. Oh. But they are trying to protect themselves. Ah, I don't so, want to suffer. So I, I know many men who are looking for those kind of women to marry you, <laughs> Julie. I don't yeah. know. Maybe we'll do a matchmaking session. But finally, before we go, very in a sentence or two because we're out of time. Um, do you believe in, uh, would you recommend prenuptial agreements or probably known as prenup? In Nigeria, how many agreements usually hold? I, I wouldn't call it prenuptial, prenuptial agreement. I would say that families should just come together before they get married and draft a vision for your family. Draft the course, draft the path that you want to you want you want to tour as a family. Just they said write the vision and make it plain. So right. sit together with your wife, right. with your husband. Ask these critical questions. What do you have? What do I have? What do, you, what do you want to happen in this instance? And then just put it down as a plan, as a template, as a framework to guide the marriage. And just trust. Because even with the agreement, a lot still happen. I mean, Julie. look at what is happening in our country today. Thank How you many go by the agreement? They, will, they will want you to go to court. All right, we have to go, Julie. Thank you so much. Really thoroughly enjoyed listening to you. Hope to have you again soon. Uh, Julie Mobo is a family bond nurse and uh, she's been a guest joining us via a very clear zoom uh, connection link uh, from the nation's capital abuja uh, julie have a wonderful day and uh, look forward to having you back soon thank you Kofi. all right all right okay we'll take a break um when we come back we're going back to um uh, the fuel subsidy issue of course um the federal government is set to increase salaries uh, of government workers by 40 percent we'll talk about that when we return please stay with us
Dzięki.